Hi, I'm Jerome. I come from Paris. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. It's uh, you know, my first time meeting Ian and Chris and, uh, and many people. And if I have interacted with you online, I'd really like to meet you in, in person. So Ian asked me, could you please uh, show some cool stuff tonight? And uh, of course, I can do it all day. So I'll do <laughs> trips to a few projects so others can, can do that. Um, um, I okay. Yeah, that doesn't work so well. Um, give me, give me a hand. Right? What do I need to do? Yeah. So that's okay. 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 So that's the best way. Yeah, but you know, there's two people that go faster. You're on. Yeah, there. Okay. 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 You're running for daily uh, changing, <coughs> color changing apps in the media bar, Flux, yeah, yeah, the next one over. <coughs> <laughs> 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 yeah. So let's be. <laughs> so that, uh, before, so as I uh, try to get this shaped, so that's a uh, visualization I've done based on the book Game, Game of Thrones that's um, any self respecting details. And what I got, what I was doing was, um, as I was reading the books, I, I captured all the events that were happening, like which character were introduced, who kept boom, etc. And so I could, I could animate it. And so this visualization shows all the stuff which are, which are happening. So here it goes really fast, so there's no spoiler. And I'm, I'm not going to, to play it until the end, but then you can go and explore and, uh, and do one stuff and see what happens to them. And, uh, like this and like that. So that's that was one project, and um, which was quite, quite successful, but a bit grim. So I thought I would show you a happier project um, that not not a lot of people have seen because those were the, the greeting cards that I, I sent uh, for the new year, and I only sent uh, those greeting cards to the people uh, with whom I, I communicated a lot because it's based on the the emails uh, we exchanged. So here's um, the one I, I sent to, to Scott here. And so, um, if it works. Right. So basically, I, I took all those emails and tweets that we exchanged with Scott and found some, some words that defined um, those emails <laughs> and, and did that. So we could you know, reminisce fondly our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that was uh, that was pretty nice. I, I like doing that as a person, you know, as people killing each other. What is the blurry part? Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to see on the screen. Uh, he says I said, and he said you said. Yes, that's what Scott says goes like this, and what I say goes like this. So for the record, in October, uh, Scott and I presented uh, this week tutorial at uh, this week in Seattle. And by the way, uh, we're going to do that again at Strata uh, next Tuesday. So if you're going to use Strata, please come to our show. And if you're not going to Strata, it's going to be recorded, right? So I think. Sure. Um, right. Uh, the next one I can show is actually the first district project that I made. Uh, it was for a contest, for uh, a David McCandless contest um, about the uh, IMDb data set. And um, so we had a, a bunch of movies, a few, a few thousand actually, to, to visualize, and we had to show um, interesting stuff about them. So I did that with a, a, a girl called Jen Law, and um, um, so it's, it's basically a scatter plot. But with this, we can be. Uh, a more fun scatter plot, uh, uh, stars moving in, in, in animation and, and stuff moving in. And if we move over, there's mm -hmm. more stuff. We can click on a, any star that represents a movie and get some information and, and, and do all kind of uh, fun things. What are the axes? Uh, yeah. This one, it's profitability, that is, how much money they made. Uh, by how much money it costs to make. And this one is a Rotten Tomato score. 
but you can you can change them so we can do stuff like this in the uh, so you can that kind of stuff. Um, right, so it's it's been done last year, so uh, it's not you won't have the most recent ones. Um, and I'm, the last project I'm going to, to show today is the, the latest, which has been published. It's went out today, actually. Uh, um, two weeks ago, I was having dinner with some uh, visualization friends. And we found out that we were all working on a project with uh, uh, bubble charts and uh, false layout. So here's, here's mine. Uh, I'm showing it because it's really typical of the things that uh, we freelance uh, visualizers are asked to do. It's a, it's a bubble chart, and when you click on, on the stuff, the bubbles will move. Um, <laughs> so, but actually, I have another reason to show it, because uh, so this specific uh, application is about how much bandwidth um, various applications or, or various uh, malware represent. And in that data set, there's a lot of what you guys are doing here in, uh, in San Francisco. So you can, you, know, you can find yourself if you look at uh, some of like, uh, well, the bigger ones are for some specific technology. But if you look at, I don't know. Can you use the microphone a little bit more? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so um, if you look at, for instance, uh, the social networking uh, here, I guess you, you have LinkedIn, Anita. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, Facebook here, uh, Tumblr, uh, Astra. Um, so I'll stop here uh, to see my, the rest of my stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm JQ here on Twitter, and that's the most concise way to uh, show what I have. It's, it's got links to my site. So All right, thanks a lot. So, hi, uh, I'm Yuri Tulos. I'm a co-founder at Bitdeli. And Bitdeli is a platform for, it's a platform for, uh, that makes it really easy to create custom analytics. And um, so we basically are in the same field as Google Analytics, Mixpanel, Kissmetrics, those kind of existing tools. You might have heard of them. Um, and the thing is, why we wanted to build Bitdeli is that those tools are great. And they're great for the basic analytics. But that's also the stuff that everybody else is using. And nowadays, data is the thing that really makes a difference in business. So we wanted to build a tool, a platform, that makes it really easy to uh, get the metrics you really want with your data and your code. And um, also make it so easy that there's no need to learn Hadoop or these big data stuff that, that uh, it's, it's really just a small bunch of experts that, that know, the, know, know the stuff. So, so this is Big Telling, and uh, let me show how we use D3 at, at, uh, today in our production. So, the first thing when I log into Big Telling uh, is this uh, bunch of dashboards. So, each of these things here in the list is a different dashboard showing different data, different metrics, and like typically is, is uh, usage data, or it's data from other services, such as uh, customer support, uh, billing systems, stuff like that. And we can show time series, uh, and this is all day three. Uh, or we can show just a simple status of the application. And uh, like a real, real life example uh, would be like uh, that, that something that can be done with Google Analytics, for example, is uh, looking for active users. So here's a chart of all the people, over all the people, and how many active sessions they've had. So. There's a lot of people that just visited the site or the mobile app just once, and there's less people who have come again. And this is the interesting stuff that businesses want to know. Uh, so why did they come back? And the, under the chart, there's a list of events that correlate with the activity. So it really answers 
why why these users come back? Why what what do the really active users do? And this might help uh, make the product better. So this is what we do. And uh, really, the core of Bitly is that you can customize everything. We have this uh, dashboard of all the charts we have nowadays. Uh, there's a map, there's a line chart, there's a bar chart, uh, there's some user-specific stuff, and there's basic tables. And the nice thing about this is that you can edit it straight in the browser. And on the other side, there's a Python script. It's plain Python. And on the other side, there's the dashboard. And the nice thing about this is that it, because it all works in the browser, we can uh, change the dashboard right in there. So, uh, for example, this bar chart is defined here in the code. We can change the size, run the script, and it changes right here. And uh, um, so, so, so one of the key benefits also for us for D3 is that it generates the same kind of markup that the other JavaScript frameworks do. So D3 creates SVG, the other tools make HTML or something, and we can all uh, we can style it all with CSS. So this is a uh, nice stream. We have a set of themes, color themes for these dashboards, and we can just change it here in the code. Oops and uh, run the script. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Different theme for the same, it's, it's rendered with the same code. There's just a different CSS file for the visualizations. So, and we actually have, we pre-compile these from uh, less style sheets, if you know. Uh, how, how they work. So, um, and all this is actually binded with Backbone. So, as we got a question earlier about binding this with frameworks, we actually have all these charts as different Backbone views. So, if somebody is interested about our approach on that, and then if we're organizing a meetup later, I'm happy to contribute with our approach. Um, so, and this is happening right now. Uh, we have the site live, so if you want to check it out, uh, the best way actually is to uh, get our batch and put it on your GitHub account. So um, if you have a, an awesome D3 project or anything, you should have it on GitHub for everybody to see it. And uh, if you want to see how many people visit the repo, so you can put our batch and get the traffic data straight to Bitdelic. And you will, you'll also get a free Vitaly account. So that's our offer for all the developers out there. And uh, so if you have any questions, you can uh, come ask me or contact us at Twitter or just uh, shoot us an, an email. Thank you very much. Hi, so uh, my name's Alex Johnson. Uh, I just want to share with you guys a project I've been working on for the uh, last six months or so. Uh, it's called Plotly, and the idea is more or less uh, a full data analysis and visualization framework uh, in the browser. Um, kind of a, a modern replacement for tools like uh, MATLAB or R um, that allows you to, to uh, drop files right in, we'll try to plot them without you even doing anything else besides dropping them in. Um, and then once you have a graph that you like, you can customize it all right there, uh, send it out to your friends or collaborators, or post it on a website um, as an interactive visualization. Um, we've, uh, we've got the whole thing built in, in SVG with D3 running it. Uh, it's been a really powerful and, uh, and a great framework for us to use. Um, right now, it's uh, we're just getting started, so it's uh, you know we've got a range of scatter plots and things that you can make. Um, 
we're still working on adding other kinds of visualizations, but uh, it's free to check out and I'd love to get any feedback from all the new uh, developers and visualizers out there. It's awesome, where can I get it? <laughs> Plot.ly, just uh, go take a look. Uh, do you have anything that works with like IPython? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, it's it's not IPython per se, but there is a Python um, uh, Python console that you can use, and you can write Python scripts, do your uh, analysis of your data, and uh, simulations. Is that on the browser? Yeah, it's all. I mean, the, the Python is running on the on the server side. Cool. Are you implying that you can solve differential equations before the plot? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, you can, anything you can write up in Python, if you want to solve a, a differential equation or, or uh, any other sort of you know, simulation on your data or whatever, it can go straight into these plots. How large a data set can you handle? That's something we're, uh, we're working on right now. Um, at the moment, it can handle something like you know, something modest like 10,000 points in a, in a plot. Um, but we have some, some uh, pathways to get that up to a million. Can I use it with R? We've been, we've been thinking about that, actually. Um, you know, a lot of people have, uh, I've actually never used R. I've uh, grown up with Python. But um, uh, we've been considering integrating R as a, another command line option. I used to be a research scientist with Nokia for more than 16 years, and uh, then came some reorganization, and I got into visualization. I have a small studio, design studio, with a friend and former colleague, we call it Marzipan. Uh, the focus area is where we are doing projects, uh, experiment sharing, interaction design and visualization. I'm not going to talk much about the first two ones, except that experiment sharing. We will at some point get into the visualization. This originates from some early research project. That's a story of a person for a seven days period, and we could interact with that visualization, that spherical uh, setup with uh, speech interface, uh, 3D gestures with the phone. We could go into that. Uh, that uh, that story and see the details. So this is a, this is again a, something what we what we try to focus on in, in the future. I'm going to talk about a bit a uh, couple of projects what we've done lately in the visualization domain. Actually, I done 12 years ago my first visualization. This was a Nokia corporate data, 6,000 phone calls, and we wanted to see that how it performs in terms of the speech recognition accuracy and what people. Accomplish so all these these uh, uh, interactions went through and they connected to the right person. It was a relatively large uh, implementation with some 23,000 names, and all the rest of the uh, interaction they were rejected or or the users uh, had to make a new trial. The two most recent projects. This is a. Uh, it's interesting, life is interesting. I've been working in the interaction area with wireless sensor networks and now working with a non-profit organization, former colleagues from UCLA. So this is about uh, acoustic data visualization. And what they have on the California coast, they have uh, sensor stations and those stations are mobile phones. So what they are doing, those mobile phones, they are just recording the the sound, when get sound. And what researchers are interested in, are there birds or not? They're not really interested at that point, but what are those birds? And basically, what we are doing, we are accumulating, this is for a year, data, 17 deployments, and each deployment has some 5 to 20 stations, and again, those stations are mobile phones. Uh, I have some offline data here, so I'm not sure it's, it's working properly, but if we click on it, we get to one deployment, let's see all those data. No, there are the stations. Sorry, I was wrong. So this deployment, actually it's on Hava. 
the rest are in North California, of course. Um, another project, so again, we are just really, really quite new again uh, to this visualization domain. So the only other thing I can show you is uh, <coughs> a recent hackathon at Stanford. Uh, have you ever wondered these hackathon projects and challenges where they are going? So this is a visualization with some data from Kaggle and different topics, uh, healthcare, social, transportation. What's happening here is that we are showing the temporal progress on this challenge clock. Uh, the radius shows that how much time is left, six months, four months, two weeks, nothing. And on the square basically is the, is the percentage, 25%, 50%. So you start always here and you end up there. And the size is related to the, to the number of teams. It's still in progress. What we're trying to do here is showing also the relation to the prices and uh, who won and what is, the, what is the most popular topic or, or, or area where people are participating. So that's it. Um, Feel free to check out our website, there are a couple other projects also. Cool. So, uh, this is just one visualization because I thought I you know, need to stick to two minutes. But uh, my name is Amelia, and I'm the data scientist at Future Advisor, which is a company that like automatically manages all your existing investment accounts to try to maximize your returns of course and uh, so a lot of my job is just like in like ipython notebook with pandas like, looking at all this massive amounts of data that we have and trying to figure out what we can learn from it uh, and then some like blog posts and visualizations come out of that so this is one that i just wanted to share because i was kind of crazy uh, so uh, everybody thinks that if you like the more people are in your company in your 401k plan, the better a deal you'll get. Uh, but it's actually only true up to about a thousand participants. And after that, and this kind of went further on, but I cut it off, because uh, like the government plan has like four million people in it, and so you kind of get a crazy scale if you went to that, and I haven't learned zooming yet. Uh, so basically, uh, this is the number of people in the plan and these are the fees paid annually if you invest because when you like buy uh, some mutual fund you have like, an expense ratio uh, so what i found was that like, like new york life insurance company has an expense ratio of 0.82 percent across all of their options and so if you're investing in your 401k you have to buy kind of expensive plans or it's like a Adobe has an expense ratio of 0.23. And so, like, if you are investing, if your account balance is like 75K, then people at Adobe are paying 200K for, and people at New York Life are paying, or $200. And people at New York Life are paying like over $600 for the same thing. Um, so, the only, like, other difference that we could come up with uh, was just that. Like once a company is about a thousand people, then it all comes down to the HR department negotiating. So if you uh, if you have a bad deal on your plan, like if you're if the options that are available to you are really expensive, you should go to your HR department and be like, we should go uh, try to negotiate for better fees. Um, so that was all. I just thought it was kind of cool. And, uh, this was my first like big giant one that I made a few weeks ago, so uh, hopefully I'll have more to contribute in the future. Uh, so I, I'm Mike, Mike Travers, I work at, uh, I do scientific visualization, or scientific information processing. This is a visualization that has nothing to do with uh, my day job. This was just a sort of a D3 experiment I did, so I'm very much in the spirit of you know, trying to figure out what I could do as a learning project. So uh, I had a particular question I want to answer, which is just, you know, what's, what's the correlation between population density and the uh, voting Democratic or, Republic, or Republican? 
So um, this is uh, basically a, a, a scatter plot of, ca of counties. Uh, the horizontal scale is, pop is the population density. It's a, lo a log scale, and I'm using D3's nice little automatic log scale thing. Um, and uh, the vertical axis is the percentage voting dem democratic. And uh, you know, this is using pretty much basic D3 stuff without any uh, invention, except I, I, I managed to hook up, you know, connect uh, the, 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 the geographic view and the scatter plot view. That took that took a little bit of uh, of doing, and that lets you, you know, you know, investigate some questions like you want to see uh, what a, how a particular region is voting and do things like that. So, um, and you know, there's some interesting things showed up. Like, so it's it's pretty much as you can see, it's a, a nice correlation. Uh, the denser you go, the more blue you get. That's not, not, a bit, not, not a very big surprise, I kind of knew. But then there's things like here, here's some low density areas that are very blue. Those turn out to be mostly uh, you know, Indian reservations or you know, counties where there's a lar uh, rural counties with a large Hispanic population. So you know, a, few, a, few, a few things jumped out. Anyway, so um, that, that's about it. This was uh, my, you know, Second D three project, and I was you know, pretty impressed by by how you could do a lot with a little. Yeah. What's the radius of the circle? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's the actual population. So, uh, so it's it, the position is density, but the actual population is, is the area of, of the circle. So you know these are these are like you know the big uh, the big coastal cities for the most part, and then so and then there's there's a few, there's a you know a few you know. Here's a here's here's a here's a here's a big, somewhat dense Republican area that turns out to be Salt Lake City. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Any any other questions? Okay, I have Santiago, please. I do not use D three. <laughs> I just told that to Scott and I won't forget his face. <laughs> but paraphrasing Chomsky, he will say that if a Martian goes here, visit us on the earth and see the work of every of us working in data visualization projects, the Martian will say that we are all using the same framework. With I think it, which is described in the grammar of graphics. And the genius of D3 is the, his elegance and beautiful correlation with the grammar of graphics, which is the actual framework we use, the actual knowledge, okay? So at the end of the, end of the day, we are using the same language, going through the same kind of process, okay? Um, no, the announcement is just that uh, next Monday, there's um, a meetup, a data visualization meetup, and there will be two speakers, uh, Eric Brodbeck, Brodbeck from Stamen, right? and, and me, okay? Uh, we will be featuring projects, etc. so you are, of course, invited. This is my website here, moebio.com, and here you have in the, the bottom the link to the to the meetup page, okay? So you're, you're invited, and this is my website. It's, it's quite new, and okay. I wanted to show you very quickly this, this widget. I'm very proud. It's a ternary diagram, <laughs> and you can go from one tag to another. So you can see all my projects, or my favorite, or the reason, or a combination in these three categories, or you can choose other different things, other tags such as science, math, and networks. So again, you can like explore my framework. That's okay. So that's all. <laughs>